Hi guys, and welcome back to yet another video. This one's going to be a bit different. So instead of walking you through a NADN workflow, I'm going to walk you through step-by-step step how you can get your first client for your automation business. Because I assume most of you guys watching have an end goal of turning the skills you develop by working on NADN into stone cold cash and actually make a living for yourself doing the things you'd like do you like doing i was exactly where you were at a couple of months ago like five or six months ago when i started working uh, on developing my nn or my automation skills in general i didn't have any clients i didn't have any purpose of doing it i just watched a bunch of youtube videos and thought hey i can replicate that and once i started getting the hang of it i thought well this can also be useful for others, but where do I start? And this video, I'm trying to show you where you can start and what I learned over the couple of months that I've been trying to get clients for myself. And even though there are really no shortcuts to getting your first clients, and it is gonna take quite a lot of work, I can assure you, there are some tips and tricks I can give you. And I will also show you some screenshots of examples of automated workflows that I built myself that automate a real big part of the process uh, of getting new clients. So this video is going to be about how to get your first 10K a month. There's such a big hype around AI at the moment and all business and everyone in business is shifting their focus towards either AI or towards automating processes, which usually, as you guys know, go hand in hand. This creates kind of the perfect scenario for people who already have the skills to reach out to businesses and to just provide their services to implement either the automations or improve the automations with the new AI or with new integrations. So time is of the essence, but of course you need to know where to start and how to approach the outreach. So I never like to overcomplicate things. That's why if you get down to the nitty gritty, there are only three actual ways of acquiring your first clients. The first is using your own personal network or a network of your parents or of some close friends or relatives you have. I wrote it down as you always know a guy who knows a guy. What I mean by that is that there's always someone you know, who knows someone who has a problem, which you with your newfound knowledge about automations or AI can solve. I mean, it's worth it to just let people know what you've been doing, how you've been developing your automation skills, maybe show them what's possible by a YouTube video to get them intrigued. And you never know, they might be like, oh, wow, this is really cool. This could be very useful for my business. And there you have it, you have your first client. I mean, if it's an acquaintance, you might charge just a small fee or do it for free because maybe if it's your first, just to get the experience. And then secondly, there's inbound. I wrote it down as LinkedIn, YouTube, TikTok, but you can think of every social media there is. It's just a way of getting the word out there and getting people to approach you to solve their problems. So the, one of the ways I use is what you can see right now is YouTube. Even though I'm a really small channel and I just started a couple of weeks ago, I started documenting the progress I made and the things that I thought were really cool. I wanted to share with other people. And through that way, through YouTube, even though I've gotten quite little views, there have still been some people who booked consultations or who've booked meetings and actually came to me and would be like, hey, I have this issue, can you solve it for me? And I would of course say, yeah, sure, I can solve it for you, but I charge an hourly fee. And if they agreed, I could work on a project. So I would strongly suggest if you think you've gotten something valuable to share, if your NATN skills are anyway halfway decent, try making YouTube videos, try making TikTok videos, try even sharing your progress on LinkedIn. It only takes one person to come across your content to actually get your first client. So the channel I mainly use for acquiring new clients is outbound lead generation. Uh, and then I mainly use emailing, as you can see, but there's also cold calling or DMing people on once again, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever. I use emailing. Emailing has been around for a long time, but I think with the somewhat recent developments in the AI space, it's become a lot more feasible of automating the entire sales process. So I've been building out sales systems for the past couple of months now, and I think I've gotten them down to somewhat of a decent standard. So if you aren't familiar with sales, there are multiple steps to the process. I mean, first of all, you have to build a lead list. You can either scrape them from LinkedIn Navigator, Apollo. If you're looking for real estate agents, you can scrape them from Zillow. There are tons of other ways where you can connect to B2B businesses and find their email or their phone number. 
in this case we're after their emails then you need to the next step is enriching those that data and then on and on and on until you have a meeting and eventually until they sign the proposal and i've been trying to automate every step of this process and i think i've gotten quite far so let me share some examples with you so what you can see on screen right now is a screenshot from a init and workflow this one is what i was talking about first because first we need an email to send to so what i do is i use an api request from a apify scraper to scrape leads on apollo apollo is just one giant database of linkedin profiles usually with a verified email or a verified phone number so i get those i have my own i use my own filters then i tell the api to scrape the pages uh, and i get all the data i then filter whatever i need because if whenever you scrape a lead you get a lot more stuff than you actually need to enrich it later on i don't know if many of you know but there has been an addition i think it's been over a month now where and it and added a new node, which lets you remove duplicates even from previous runs, just whatever passed through it's marked as already seen. So in this case, I filter it by uh, LinkedIn URL. So if this, the same LinkedIn URL comes by, it filters it out. So my CRM won't be filled with duplicates. And then lastly, as you can see, it's put into an Airtable. I've shown it in previous videos before. I think Airtable is amazing and you can actually use it as a complete standalone CRM. That's what I use it for. So once we have the name, the email, and just basic information about the lead, we can go on to the next process, to the next step, which is enriching your lead, getting more than just their info. So scraping their LinkedIn, scraping their website, building a profile of the one you're trying to contact and trying to do business with. So some might be spooked by what you see on the screen because it's a lot of notes. But it's actually quite simple, quite straightforward. I'll be going over this example in depth in future videos. So if you are interested, stick around. I won't dive too deep into it right now, but in essence, it's just once a lead is added to the CRM, I can change its status, which sends a webhook to this workflow. And this workflow is always active. Then it just scrapes the person's company LinkedIn. It scrapes their company website. It uses all that information to answer basic questions about what their main product and service is, what their kind of industry they're in, what their missions and mission or value is as a business. It writes down any success stories or notable achievements that they've made because they usually post about it either on LinkedIn or they paste it on, post it on their website. And then it creates a personalization, which is usually um, the opening line to an email, just something which makes it seem to the people reading the email that you've actually done your research. And it not only increases your open rate because people can see it as like a preview next to the subject of the email, but it also massively increases your reply rate because people don't assume you're just spend, s sending out bulk emails, but you're actually pursuing them because you think there's a business fit between you and them. Then on to the next part. So once you start either filling your CRM with hundreds or maybe thousands of leads and you start automating the process of enriching those leads and sending them out emails, there's always one or two that are going to respond. And reply time, replying back to a lead who responds is critical. I think if it's it takes longer than 15 minutes, the chance of closing the lead goes down, down by a few percent already. That's why I built out this email classifier and also it's also an email responder. An email classifier is one of the first videos I made and it's actually quite funny because it was really simple to make at the time. And I didn't really think I was gonna use it because it was, it was never needed for personal use. But then when working on these sales systems, I figured that it can actually be useful and I can make it more elaborate to fill all the needs to get it to do exactly what I needed to do. So once again, I won't go over it in too much depth. I'll go over it in future videos as for all the other screenshots you see on here. If any of these flows speak your interest in particular, just put it down in the comments and I'll make them make a video about them first. So once again, this workflow is triggered by a webhook. The webhook then retrieves the email reply, not the email that we've sent. So one of the cold emails that we've sent and also the reply we've gotten to that email. It then retrieves the information of the lead. So their information, their personal information, their name, blah, 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 and all the things that we've enriched. 
that bar as parse to a code node. And then it's just a simple email classifier. I've given it pretty basic instructions, usually based on keywords or things like, so let's say you in your, your call to action in your outbound email is, are you free to schedule a meeting next week? And a reply to that email might be, yes, I am free next week. Can you send me your calendar? So in that case, it would be classified ready to schedule. That's uh, the classifier name that I've given it. And it would go to the upper channel, which would then change the status of the lead in my CRM. So in Airtable, it would also change the status in instantly. This is a step not necessarily for everyone, but I just like to keep everything in sync. Uh, and it would then craft a reply. So this is almost like a template. So the only variables it'll have would be input from the person's reply, so their first name, or maybe some specifics that if sent in the email, it would wait because if the, the workflow is, this workflow is triggered seconds after I've received, received the email, but it's not really realistic to send an email back within seconds. That's why this is a random interval, but somewhere between five to 10 minutes. And then it sends an email using this HTTP request note. You have to imagine that this can flow indefinitely so as you can see there are a lot of routes people can go down they can ask for request more information they can have objections all, all sorts of stuff maybe it would be helpful if i sketched a scenario so let's say you send out a cold email it's your first cold email and it's telling them that you can build them automations that increase the speed of their processes and increase their roi within 30 days and they would request more info. So it would go down the more info route. The reply would be received by this workflow and it would go down the more info route. Then you send them a, a case study, for example, that you've made or that you let AI ChatGPT write. And they read the case study and reply back to you with, wow, this is really amazing. I think this would be a fit for my company. So in that case, it would the workflow would trigger again. And instead of going down the more info route, it would go down the ready to schedule route you would send them a calendar link to set up the meeting and voila, it's a one-on-one -on -one call between you and a potential client paying you money. So once this reply and answer loop is closed and the meeting is booked, we go on to the next, which is quite a simple flow. As you can see, this is triggered when a meeting is booked. For that, I use Cal.com, but you can also use Canonly or whatever. Uh, I would choose, choose something with a native integration, but you can of course also choose something which is which can send a webhook and it retrieves the Airtable data because we need the first name and we need their email address, etc., etc. Then it goes down one of either of these two routes based on do we have the information, yes or no. And it sends out an email with a thank you for scheduling the meeting. I'm looking forward to talking to you one-on-one. -on -one. Here is the meeting link in case it gets lost in your spam. Once the meeting is booked, it's really up to you. You've let AI and automations do, do most of the heavy lifting, but at some point there's gonna be some actual contact between you and potential clients. I would suggest making a presentation for yourself, like not a stiff old PowerPoint one, but just a just something with maybe a few screenshots of NADN workflows or projects you've either worked on for other people or things you have built out yourself. So you can just show them what's possible. And you also have some guidelines for yourself because it can be quite intimidating. I remember the first few calls I was on, I had a dry mouth. I was out of breath for a large part of it and I didn't really know what to talk about it sometimes. So it really triggered me to, instead of go, go through that again, work on my skills and give myself some hand drills. So if I get lost or if I start rambling too much, that I have something to fall back on. So I can already promise you that not all of your sales calls will be a success. There will be some times where you just can't close, you can't agree on the price or you can't agree on the scope, but let's look on the bright side and let's think of a time where you did close the deal. Then you would use this last system. It's just, once again, it's called by a web, triggered by a webhook. So you would change the status in your Airtable CRM the webhook would trigger the flow. It would retrieve the information from the Airtable and it would send an email thanking them for the opportunity to talk to them and saying that the proposal will be sent within a few hours. One thing that I've been thinking about that I will add and that you can also add to this workflow is a transcription and a summary of the meeting that you've just had. Like 
uh, I know Zoom does, and probably also a lot of video call solutions have the opportunity to download the transcription of the meeting. Uh, and then you can just let AI summarize it uh, and give bullet points in the email back to the client. They will really appreciate it. And it's also very useful for yourself once writing the pro a proposal or if you have to get back to them at a later point in time to get the essence of what you, were, what you talked about. So that concludes uh, my presentation for today. Um, I hope you took some learnings from this five part sales system. And I really hope that you guys try to build this out yourself and put it to use because it's, it has worked for me. As I, as I said earlier in the video, I'm doing about 20 to 25K a month, which is mostly due to these systems. It's mostly due to this outbound sales system that I built in maybe a week or so. If you watched all the way to the end, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in diving deep into these sales systems that I just talked about. If there are any in particular that piqued your interest, as I said earlier, please leave it down below in the comments. So I'll make sure to make a video about them first. If there are any problems or anything you're unsure about. If I was wrong and you're not building out your AI automations agency yourself, but you're actually a business owner who's looking to automate their sales processes and isn't sure if they can do it themselves, feel free to hit me up. There's a link in the description below for a discovery call where we can see if you and I are a good fit and I can get the same results for you as I've done for other clients. All that rests me is thanking you for watching. Leave a like uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.